uh, took Harry. I mean, he, he he was known by then. He had had hits by then. But when this album came out in late 1971, um, it really took him to another level. And and the success of the album, the success of Without You as the single, um, was really uh, it just uh, he rocketed and. Uh, and that was a good thing, and as it turns out, a bad thing as well. Yeah, we're, we're going to mention, like, you followed up uh, Sonish Nielsen. Probably one of my personal favorites because You're Breaking My Heart was the first song I ever heard from Harry Nielsen. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell, tell your listeners what, what that's all about. Well, it's uh, – Harry, Harry wasn't exactly going through the best of times. Uh, it comes with the with the female species at the time. It was the, one of those classic kiss-off songs. Uh, it could be perceived as a good breakup song. <laughs> it's just like, hey, you're breaking my heart, you're tearing me apart, so, yeah, blank And there's you. some interesting use of language. Yeah, very colorful. A song could have been a hit. <laughs> it, it, it's a perfect pop song, and it just drops the F-bomb like nobody's business. Well, you know, that's, that's Richard Perry's point in the film, is that here's a guy that uh, could have um, written just tremendous songs and had big, big hits with them. And and what did he choose to do? He chose to do this. <laughs> and you know, uh, it's it, it's it's sort of um, the the Harry story, which, which is blessed with great talent, um, had a number of terrific opportunities, and uh, sometimes uh, did not always make the best decision. No. And a thing too that comes out is you know they talked about with the with the Smothers Brothers was that infamous Troubadour incident with John Lennon and some uh, Brandy Alexanders. <laughs> yes, well you know what's interesting about this, Glenn, is the the, the that night at the Troubadour has been uh, written up in uh, many many different uh, rock and roll books and magazines, and uh, it's become one of the uh, uh, scandalous moments in, in, in rock history, and and they didn't quite get it right. Uh, they they actually confused two nights, uh, the different nights of the Troubadour that involved Lennon, but Harry was only there for one of them. Okay. And uh, but anyway, it was it was again typical Harry. He and John Lennon kind of hooked up uh, during what's called the you know, Lost Weekend period. Sound like, and, sound like a hell of a party. Uh, it's a hell of a party. eighteen months and. Um, uh, they had this night at the Troubadour, going, you know, and, and uh, the, the thing that most people realize is that uh, um, they're going to see the Smothers Brothers, and, mm-hmm. and, and Harry and John were actually friends with the Smothers Brothers, yeah. Tommy Smothers in particular. And uh, so they were just going, but they had, uh, shall we say, a little too much. Uh, one too uh, many. <laughs> one too many, uh, or four too many. <laughs> uh, Twelve, whatever. <laughs> who's, who's, who's to keep track and, of the math? And they just kind of got wild and crazy and ruined the whole night and uh, <laughs> for the Smothers Brothers. It was a big, big concert for them. And uh, But this is, again, one of the great stories, and Harry's life is just filled with great stories. Well, yeah, you, I, I mean, the party animal phase, uh, I mean... We, he had a, didn't, I, I've been hearing things like he had kind of a, 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 an eclectic list of running buddies there. Uh, I hear something about this Hollywood vampires thing with Mickey Dolenz and Lennon and all these guys, Alice Cooper. I mean, this was a collective gang of uh, fun and happy hooligans, but, you know, the party came to an end, and there was a lot of, uh, you know, consequences for, for all of that partying and revelry. Yeah, well, you bet. And uh, Keith Moon was in that group. Uh, yes, and yes. i got to tell you, though, it's kind of interesting as I've, as I've – uh, uh, going along, um, uh, every, uh, more people than you would imagine have a Harry story. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, uh, he got around Harry, and, and, and so many people knew him or had encountered him or uh, had been at a party with him or went running with him. and They may not have stayed in his life for a super long time, but, but uh, Harry got around, and, and he was a favorite because, you know, he was crazy, uh, could, could behave crazy. We know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was also a sweetness to him. There was also a very good person in there. And I think all these people were very much uh, attracted to that good person. And I think that's kind of the duality that was Harry mm-hmm. uh, that really is very interesting, yeah. that – um, he, he could have all the craziness. He could have the bad behavior, um, but at the same time, could be just a really nice guy mm-hmm. that that people would want to spend time with. And uh, uh, it actually uh, allows me to uh, 
mention that on the DVD, we have uh, 90 plus minutes of uh, bonus material. And in the bonus material, we have a couple of sections that talk about how generous Harry could be mm -hmm. um, with his money, uh, with his time. And um, uh, so you, you do get a sense that there were uh, multiple Harrys living inside uh, the one guy. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing, you know, the thing that really moved me too was uh, the impact of John Lennon's death, uh, what, how it you know, affected Harry and how... You know, he, he compromised his career at that point to uh, fight t for the campaign of anti-gun laws mm -hmm. and, and issues like that. I mean, that that must have really just, you know, you know, people just leaving a career to fight the cause and having it affect him so much. It was just so real, you know, how, how much he really did truly love his friend. It, it went beyond just lost weekend drinking sessions. This was a solid and uh, terrible loss for him, and he really tried his best to make something positive out of it. Uh, no question, uh, and he he was yeah totally moved to do that. And uh, again, that's 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 who Harry was. Um, if he was your friend, he was your friend, and pretty interesting, mm -hmm. and uh, and to be admired, I think. Yeah. Um, not always again. Not always making the best decisions, whether it was career decisions or personal decisions. Um, so one one could fault him for all of that, but. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I've done films on a lot of uh, great artists, a lot of great singers, a lot of great musicians, mm -hmm. and um, always, of course, looking for the great story. Uh, but you're also looking for a life that has some substance to it so that when you are peeling away um, the layers of the onion to say, okay, well, what kind of a person is under there, that it, it really is very compelling. And the, the best kind of... Um, response that we can have is, is is yours where you know you watch this and, and you were just found it very compelling viewing and i think that's great and another thing that really moved me too was uh, later on his role as a father you know and having a whole bunch of those kids but just how uh, good of a dad you know from what it sounded like how he was he was there for his kids and that's just another wonderful quality too i mean again it's just more layers as you peel into this person yeah very much so um and I think it also points out how um, Harry could learn. Um, he was not a good father the the, the first time out, mm -hmm. um, admittedly so. Uh, he was not a good husband the first time out. Uh, but as he got older and had more life experiences, um, all of a sudden um, he learned to be a good dad and he learned to be a good partner. And um, he stayed married, um, you know, till the end of his life uh, to 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 Una, and uh, they talked just about what a great, um, you know, uh, uh, person he was, and what a great life they had together. And that that's again part of the the pointed aspects of this that uh, he he died young. Mm -hmm. And it was very unfortunate. Uh, we're, we're here with uh, filmmaker John Scheinfeld, director of a great documentary. Who is Harry Nielsen, and why is everybody talking about him? Do you have any uh, last words before we send you on your way tonight? Uh, I just again, I gotta say thank you for putting together such a wonderful film. Oh well, thanks. Uh, I appreciate the kind words. I I, I would just uh, say that I'm I'm so proud of this film, and I think Harry's one of these guys. You and I were talking about this uh, before, uh, Glenn. Uh, he's one of these guys, very hip guy, hip music, kind of under the radar. And I think it's uh, an artist that people should know. And, and here's a good introduction to him. And, and uh, hopefully you'll, uh, your listeners will uh, go see the film. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, well, then go out and buy some, uh, some Harry music. I ordered my brother the first three Nielsen, uh, Harry Nielsen albums for, for the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Excellent. Yes. I, I want to thank you again for uh, taking uh, a little bit of your time, and uh, you're definitely invited to come back again if you got any more projects uh, in the not-too-distant future. Yeah, I appreciate it. That will do, Glenn. Thanks. Thanks again for the interest. Yep. Thank you, John Scheinfeld. Schell John Scheinfeld. Excuse me. My throat's getting all dry here in the <laughs> studio. Thank you so much for that great interview. Have yourself a good evening. You too, Glenn. Thank bye -bye. you. Well, there you go, gang. John Scheinfeld. Wow. Director of Who is Harry Nielsen? And why is everybody talking about it? I'm getting so dry in the studio. I think we need a, a, a humidifier or something. We were, Blind Dog and I were talking about that yeah. a few minutes ago. And that was, uh, another.